Welcome, investigator. Evil is on the rise. Crime is escalating. Our mission is to eliminate the crime by exposing evil, examine why it manifests, and highlight the brave souls that confront it every day. Join us as we work together to bring justice to every victim. Welcome to All Things Crime. Here's your host, Jared Bradley. Yeah, there's there's some, um, you know, I mean, I, I think what gets us a lot is that, you know, Cookie had mentioned it quite a, a while back that, you know, in the courts, we've had kids who've been waiting five, six years, not months, years, because that perpetrator has more rights than they do because they can change their attorney umpteen times right up to the end. Oh, no, I'm going to fire them. I need another one. Then that attorney has to have time to look everything over. Then they use that attorney. Why are they allowed to do that? Why do they have more rights? you know, than that child. I mean, I know personally for me, you take the right of a child away, you should lose your rights. But that's just me. <laughs> you know, but I mean, you know, it's, we even had somebody stand up one time during a presentation said, how do we know you bikers are 100% on the up and up? I'm like, well, you tell me an organization, a foundation, a corporation, a police station, a, you know, a church, school, that is 100% on the up and up. There's no such thing. There's always going to be something in there that is just not going to be right. And, and it's teaching these kids the right things, you know, but, but basically it's waking up people. This, if you haven't seen the sounds of uh, a freedom, please go see it. It is not a joke. We're the worst in the world. That, that just makes me sick. You know, the United States is the worst in the world. $150 billion business. Our children. What is, what? I don't get it. I don't get it. You know, I always, I'm vets, pets, and kids. Our vets, thank you both. <laughs> you know, I have made it possible for us to live the way we live. But our children and, and animals are the two things in this world that give us unconditional love. And they're abused the worst. You know, and because they can't speak up. And I'm like, no, we're going to speak up for them. We want to give them their voice back. We've had enough. Uh, a lot of us have been through abuse. I personally have, and nobody was there for me. I don't know how I came out of it, but I did. But it was difficult for me with my kids. You know, I thought that I was supposed to do to them what, what was done to me, but I wouldn't do it. I kept saying, no, no, I didn't like it. Why would I do that to my children? And my son told me at 25 years old, you know, mom, you broke the chains of child abuse in the family. I never realized that I did that. But the fact that he was aware of that, you know, he knew what I went through. I mean, it does break it because he's very good to his kids. All my kids are good to their kids, you know. So there's that break in that chain. And that's what we need to do. We need to stop putting up walls and fences and taking care of each other. You know, enough is enough. Yeah. Well, Nitro, is there a particular child or, or case that, that really hits home for you? There's been quite a few. I've been involved uh, 15 years, I'll have 16 years in, in April. And, and um, there's been some horrific cases. There's been some where we, the, the parents don't keep in touch with us, you know, so we don't know what's happening with the kids. But we do know that these kids won't forget because there's times where kids have seen us out when they moved to another state or not and saw Baca and said, hey, I was a Baca child. It's like, what? And then we kind of get that, those phone calls in and stuff. But we, we had one, the one that affected me the most, we went to court with little sister. She was probably, I want to say 14, 15. She had to go three different times. One for her aunt, one for her grandmother, one for her uncle, family members. And her little sister was killed. And when they showed the little sister, when they got her out of the box, I almost lost it in court. I've never seen that because she wasn't laying flat. She had rigor mortis had set in. And I had two Baca brothers sitting next to me and little sister behind me. And they're like, it's all right, Nitro. It's all right, Nitro. They recognized my, my thing, but I had to maintain, you know, because we don't want it to, to have a mistrial or anything like that. And I'm like, who am I to get upset when she's the one that has to deal with this and see her little sister up there? You know, three different times that she went for her sister to stand up and get justice for her. But sad that she had to do that to her own family and her own family treated her that way. 
you know, and she is a powerful kid today. I mean, a powerful kid. The brother never went to court. He didn't want to. Boys will internalize things, and that's the tough part. We're not here to take the therapist's job or anybody's job. We do what no other organization does in the world. We're just here to help. That's it, especially foster kids. I was a foster kid in in like seven different homes, and I was angry. I I didn't like them. You're not my mother. You're not, even though that was my abuser, you know, but I was angry. Had I had somebody like this helping me, I might not have been so angry because I would have had that outlet, you know, not saying that the therapist isn't the outlet, but bikers, (laughs) I mean, think about it. You know, I'd rather have them around and feel more comfortable because none of us ask that child what they went through. None of us do. Yeah. Because it's, it's not, we don't need to know. We just need to know you're hurting little brother, sister, and we're here. You know, 24-7, 365, they can call us. And, and you know, I just, uh, that's why I've been a part of this organization for so long. You know, I just, I just want to be able to do something, put a smile on a kid's face. Well, the kid, there's a reason that every child has a, a, a door that closes to their bedroom. There's a reason they have right. security blankets or a favorite pet or even a stuffed animal, something that they can a lot of times grab onto. And that gives them a little comfort, a little security. But I'm, I'm sure that there are a lot of kids out there that, like you said, are, are Baca kids that just knowing that there is somebody out there that they can call, that it, it's an outlet that would enable them to be safe again if, if it worse came down, then, yeah, I, I can't imagine the good that, that, that we're doing. And, you know, that's, we're just getting a little piece of it here. And, uh, and that's, that's one of the reasons I was so excited about having you guys on once, once I recognize it. So it's, it's, it's the impact of empowerment without stepping over the lines of what other agencies and, and counselors and everything does. They, they don't do what we do. Even the police don't do what we do. I mean, for law enforcement, think about this. At some point after that crime scene, you have to leave. You've got to go back to the line of duty and you can't be there for that kid. How many of the officers are sitting there really questioning whether or not they should leave that property that night because of the circumstance, the situation, but don't have a choice because that's not in their line of duty to sit out and do 24 seven security on a house that has a child living in fear. That's our mission. Mm -hmm. We'll sit out in front of the house 24 seven to make sure that child's not living in fear. So it's, it's a community effort that we'd like to approach with what our organization provides where we're not stepping over the lines of counselors. We're not stepping over the lines of law enforcement and what everyone has a place and and a job to do. We have one thing. We show up and we empower kids not to live in fear. We don't condone the use of violence, but if we're the only obstacle between that child and further abuse, we stand ready to be the obstacle. Mm -hmm. Man, we're just a phone call away. Yeah. That's it. I can't imagine too many guys are going to be bold enough to uh, abuse a kid when there's a bunch of bikers outside. And, and it, I'll give you an example. I'm six foot two, maybe 280 right now. And there's some people that make me look small. Okay. <laughs> you know, we got a guy named Hambone. He's about three times the size of me. So, yeah, nice. Hambone, right. And the uh, kids I, I, love it. I tell you, when we go to do what we call the level two, and that's where we camp out on their lawn if there's a threat. You know, family members will drive by and they'll call us names. And I'm like, oh, wow, I never heard that one before. You know what I mean? But that that child will look out the window to make sure we're still there. And we stay there until that threat is gone. You know, and, and whether it's one day, seven days, 30 days, around the clock, each one of my brothers and sisters, we take turns. You know, we mean business, you know, so, and, you know, they, they, and I'll tell you what, the, the police love it because they, they can't, like Cookie said, as much as they want to, they can't, you know, so we're just another avenue to help, you know, so it's, I know a couple of times we've gone to foster homes where the kids are in there and the foster parent will be like, what did you do? 
they're listening, you know, because they feel all of a sudden that safeness. I don't have to be that angry anymore. And then they want to go to their therapist. And a lot of times if they're afraid to go, well, we'll go with you, not in with them, but we'll go with you. I'll be right out here in the hallway when you're ready, you know, and they're like, really? You know, they, they don't know that there's just whatever we can, whatever it takes is pretty much our motto, whatever it takes. Yeah. Well, not, not to get too cheesy, but you know, there are some, some movies out there that to me, especially as a, as a veteran, I, as I'm watching these movies, you know, certain lines will kick in and hope, you know, hopefully everybody can relate with what I'm saying. But one of my favorites is a few good men. And oh, yeah. yeah, even though they're Marines, you know, I was, uh, <laughs> we, we tolerate the Marines, but, um, <laughs> You know, in, in that movie, they're talking about, you know, the, the soldiers in particular. And when Demi Moore basically says, you know, why, why do you like them so much? And she, and she says, because they'll stand on a wall and they'll say, nothing's going to hurt you tonight, you know, while I'm here. And I, I kind of look at you guys and, and what you do. And it, it, you know, like he said, if you're willing to if you need to, to be spending the night on the, on their lawn, then that's what you'll do. And, and you know, on your watch, the, the, that child is going to be safe that night. And to me, that's just such a, um, just an absolute amazing, amazing part of, of your entire organization. And, and, you know, Nitro, as, as we wrap up here, what can people do to help? Read the video, read the word. You know what I mean? We want people to view the video. We want people to, like you said, research us. You know, we're real. We take what we do very, very serious. And you know what I mean? Ask questions. Of course, there are going to be people out there that don't like us because we help that child in court to stand tall and their family member or whatever got put away. We didn't do it. They did. You know, uh, the perpetrator put themselves there, not us. But we, we don't care. Not everybody's going to like us. We're not going to like everybody. So, you know, but basically it's spreading the word. There's chapters that are struggling. They don't have the resources that some others do. Please go to the website, click on chapters, click on the country that you're in, you know, or the state that you're in, support those chapters, whether it's monetary, our jean jackets, you know, because we, we, pay for therapy. We put on a, a, a summer and a winter party for them so these kids can can play together. And I'll tell you what, that's when we call it Baca allergies. We get tears in our eyes because they're kids. They're having fun, you know, at these parties and they're swapping numbers, kids helping kids. How great is that? You know, and then, and we get them their, their little cuts. They're, they get a little road name. We give them a blanket, like you were saying, like a security blanket. We pass it around to all members that are there at the level one and we hug it. We do presentations everywhere. Please get with your local chapter, ask for a presentation, whether it's in a church, PTA, school, teachers, doesn't matter. Me, I'll talk to anybody from one to 10,000 people. I don't care. <laughs> I truly believe in what we do and we just need people to wake up, you know, so spreading the word about who we are and you know, please research us. That's what we want. Yeah. And the best place to go is bacaworld.org. It's B-A-C-A world.org. And that initial video is, is up there. And that's, I mean, just loved seeing that and just seeing that little girl. And it just looked like, you know, she had a smile on her face and she was just like, yep, I'm safe with, with these guys around. I'm safe. And you know, like your website says, every child deserves that. And, yes. you know, there's nothing closer to God than a little child. And, you know, animals, yes, they, they are right there too. But the children are the best of us. And, you know, a, a child playing, I, again, one, one of the moments that uh, I remember the most when I was interviewing, again, the, the executive producer of Sound of Music, as he said, that moment where in the movie – you know, after they had saved all the kids and the Colombian police had come and arrested all the traffickers and the kids were just playing and they were laughing and mm -hmm. the, the joyous sounds that only children can make that 
is the sound of freedom and yes. every child, every child deserves that. So I, I, I sure appreciate you guys coming on and, um, again, go to bacaworld.org and donate to their organization. Fantastic concept. And, and just the things that they do just come straight from the heart. And that's, that's really what this country needs right now. And it's what the world needs really. So guys, I appreciate you coming on and sharing your story and we will definitely, uh, help spread the word. So Thank you. Thanks again. Thank you, Jared, so much for this and the opportunity to, to get that awareness out there. Oh, the pleasure is all mine. Hey, guys, we will talk to you later. Thanks for joining us. Your attention today brings us one step closer to exposing and eliminating the evil that brings crime to our communities. Hit subscribe and share this episode. Together, we will bring justice to every victim.